This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In the previous lesson, we traced a flower. In other words, we converted it from a photograph into a vector, and at one point in that process, I couldn't tell the difference between the vector and the actual raster. I think that's amazing. And then we did some things to it, like colorize it, and don't forget, you can use like Illustrator vector effects to it. Have a lot of fun. In this lesson, I want to talk about another feature called Live Paint. Now, Live Paint and Live Trace kind of came out about the same time. And Live Paint allows me to paint something. But this is not a vector. It's a photograph. I like to draw on paper. I still do. It's kind of how I grew up. And so I still kind of enjoy getting down with some paper and a pencil and making a sketch. But my problem was, how do I make the transition from paper to photograph to illustrator to sketch? And that's, of course, image trace. So with the sketch here, just click the image trace button right here. The default for image trace is to convert it into a sketch because that's what it's used the most for. So I really don't have to do anything else. It's in the form that I want it to. I took something that I did with pencil on paper and now converted it. I click expand. And it now is a true vector. Imagine trying to, not that you couldn't do this, but imagine trying to make that butterfly, say, using your pen tool and doing it basically from scratch in Adobe Illustrator. This can save a lot of time. And if you're like me and you like to sketch and doodle and all that kind of stuff, quick way to do it. Now, what are we going to look at? Live paint. Live paint allows me to paint this. You say, well, okay, couldn't I do this? Say if I pick up my direct selection tool, because I know that's a group and I click, say, in this area, and I shift-click in this area, and I shift-click up here on this one, make sure I have my fill selected and come over here and choose a color, and you know, that did it, and I agree. That is a way to do it. But it doesn't solve some of the problems that you might get into. So let's look at this. First thing we have to do is we have to convert this into a live painting group, and you can do that to any vector. It does not have to have come through a photograph anything you want to do. Come up and select it. I'll use my selection tool. Select the whole thing. It is a group. Go up to the word object on the pull down menu and go down to live paint and select make. Now you'll notice we get these anchor points that look exaggerated. They got the box around them. That's just your visual that you are now in live paint. So what do we do? Well, over here, if you go into this tool right here, which of course is your shape builder tool, we talked about that before, you have a live paint bucket and a selection tool. Now the selection tool selects areas, like I did the shift click. I usually don't use that. I use the live paint bucket. Let me show you how this works. Come over and choose a color that you want to begin colorizing these areas. Now be careful about one thing, because you got that little bar up at the top saying that you're using a live paint bucket. You've got the paint bucket, and you've got that arrow in the middle. That's the hot area, not the paint bucket. In Photoshop, it's kind of like at the tip of the paint bucket, not here. Use the arrow. And I get in here and say, click right here. Now watch that area go red. If I click here, that area is going. I want to color here. I click. I click. I click. Let's go ahead and choose a different color. And come over into these areas. Again, watch for them to turn red, and you're fine. And let's go down. And so far, we're not having any problems. Very easy. But it's very intuitive, very easy to work with. We're going to have a problem in about two clicks. So let's go back to yellow. So here's click number one, and here's click number two, and here we go. You go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What happened? Well, look closely, and you will notice that there are some gaps over here. One there and one there. And those gaps are where I probably was a little bit light with the pencil. And the computer said, well, there must not be a line there. He wants that open. And it was more than glad to do that, but that's not what I want. I want that area closed. Now, there's a lot of ways I might achieve that. I could go back out of Live Paint Group, use my Join features. There's a lot of things we could do here to close those gaps off, but that could take a lot of time. The first thing we want to do is undo what we just did. Next step, and there is a feature for this, but it's only available if you're using Live Paint. So let's come over and select, regular selection tool, select our group. It's not finished yet, but we're working on it. Go up to the word object on the pull-down menu and go down to 
Live Paint Gap Options. This is really cool. Now over here, it's saying it's looking for small gaps. These are not small. They're pretty big. So if I change that and say, well, we could go medium, uh, I could try some large ones, or maybe customize it, use my own numbers. Let's try medium. Can you see that? It's temporarily closing them with that red. Now it's getting other things that it thinks are gaps. To me, that's all right. That's a necessary evil. But it's closed off those areas. Now click OK. They look like they've gone away, but go ahead and pick up your live paint bucket tool. And as you'll notice, as I get in these areas, it now works. Let's pick up another color and just begin going down. Now you will notice it did close off some other areas that really weren't gaps, but it's only looking for the gaps by definition of how wide they are. And it can't make that intelligent leap saying that must not be a gap over here. So if you do want to fill those areas, you're just going to have to click a couple more times. And to me, that's a necessary evil. It's not a big deal. Just click a couple of times. And we won't do the whole thing, obviously, because that would take too long. But when you're in the live paint group, basically what you can do is make all these decisions. And if you do have gaps or things that you wish were not there, all you have to do is use the gap options to fix those problems and then move on. Now, let's say we like what we have done. We finished the whole thing out. Uh, we don't need to be in live paint group anymore. And don't forget, this is for anything, not just something you traced. You could draw something with the objects in Photoshop and go right into paint group if you wanted to. But if it's time to convert this, you can go to the word object, go back down to live paint and select expand. And now you're back to looking at it and working with it as if you drew it with the pen tool. Between you and me, I love live paint. It's an excellent feature. On to the next.